for approximately the last 75 years. The international community has been extremely hostile towards Eritrea. Eritrea's struggle for freedom began four months prior to the agreement of the Atlantic Charter in August 1941 signed by President of the USA Franklin D. Roosevelt and the Prime Minister of UK. Winston S. Churchill, largely. The Charter was an opportunity for the respective leaders to present certain common principles of their countries on which to base their hopes for a better future for the world. Among the points these two great powers agreed upon was to respect the right of all peoples to choose the form of government under which they will live and they wish to see sovereign rights and self-government restored to those who have been forcibly deprived of them. Historical accounts of Eritrea, however, present evidence contrary to what was said and signed. Great Britain followed an obscene policy plundered Eritrean wealth and destroyed Eritrean infrastructure. One, before going on to stand against Eritrea's independence and proposing a partition of Eritrea. Two, in the hot debate on the future of Eritrea. The UK advised that Eritrea to be given to Ethiopia as a reward. In the case of Eritrea, there was a third consideration besides the welfare of the inhabitants and the stability of the region. For the United Kingdom government and the British people thought that Ethiopia was entitled compensation. Three as well, and in many respects much worse. The USA slaughtered the lively hope and prospect of an independent Eritrea, forced upon it the unfair federation of the 1950s and supported Emperor Haile Selassie's to brutal crackdown on Eritrean protests and resistance. The USA gave the green light, as well as the war material and wherewithal, for Ethiopia to torture, anguish, and demolish Eritrea for 40 years. As put by John Foster Dulles at the UN, from the point of justice. The opinion of the Eritrean people must receive consideration. Nevertheless, the strategic interest of the United States in the Red Sea Basin and considerations of security and world peace make it necessary that the country, Eritrea, has to be linked with our ally. Ethiopia, for Eritrea, America, Britain and Ethiopia can be considered as the first proverbial axis of evil that moved in unison to extinguish the flame of Eritrean independence. Their reliance was anchored on the plan to remove any semblance of an independent, viable Eritrea. In addition to this early Anglo-American and Ethiopian alliance to combat Eritrean independence, subsequent triangular associations have been established to achieve the same end. Recall the largest and longest operation waged by Ethiopia against Eritrea, the Red Star Campaign of 1982. Notably, the propaganda and diplomatic efforts were also highly intense, no less than the military dimension of the campaign. 
The dog A attempted to isolate the Eritrean masses from the freedom fighters and to cut off its connection with outside world. In search for an alliance, the dog A headed to the Aden summit of 1981 leading to the tripartite agreement signed between Ethiopia, Libya, and South Yemen. 4. Despite its aim to gain military support and to isolate Eritrean struggle, the three-party partnership disintegrated in the face of Eritrean resistance. Similar companionship glued by the hatred of Eritrea was formed again after Ethiopia's TPLF. Three waves of invasion failed to meet the desired end of overthrowing the government of Eritrea. Immediately after the devastating 1998-2000 war, Ethiopia attempted to pull together Sudan and Yemen to encircle and choke Eritrea. This association proved fruitless and ineffective ultimately failing like previous alliances formed against Eritrea. Ethiopia has tirelessly engaged in developing alliances against Eritrea. The alignments, often based on the simple principle of the enemy of my enemy is a friend don't last long and largely fail to penetrate and disturb the military capability, the economic base of self-reliance, the national policy of social justice, and the sound psychological consolidation of Eritrea. Ethiopia, faced with a plethora of significant issues and troubles, now continues its old strategy to form an alliance against Eritrea with neighboring Djibouti and Somalia. After the formation of the League of Nations, 1920, Ethiopia used the issue of Eritrea to make her sit with major powers and inherit a seat of honor. Today, remarkably, when the UN Commission of Inquiry presented its flimsy case against Eritrea, Ethiopia, Djibouti and Somalia were the ones pressing for the adoption of the unwarranted resolution against Eritrea. It is both ridiculous and shocking that these countries could do so considering their own states boast amongst the worst human rights records. Consider the following, Ethiopia is estimated to have one of the highest rates of violence against women in the world.